Hey, good afternoon, Drew. Fantastic to see you. Hey. We got another week. Yeah, good to see you too. We got another week, another book that we're reviewing. 10x is easier than 2x. Um, this is a pretty phenomenal book. It's going to be one of those that we put down in the, you know, the Colonel and Convict uh, history uh, analogs as one of those that was monumental in, in our development. And it's really pretty exciting to, to be talking about it with you today. Uh, today's, you know, the 5th of November, 2023. Winter is starting to settle in. Seahawks aren't doing the greatest in football right now. But, uh, but all is good. You know, you there in Washington, me in Kansas, you know, we did have the Chiefs win. So, you know, so half of the family here in Kansas is, is, is doing all right. But, you know, on a serious note, this, uh, this book is uh, really transformative in, in advising and, and helping people look at things differently from an entrepreneurial mindset. You don't have to be an entrepreneur to actually benefit from this. Uh, but it's definitely some tools that can change your thinking and, and elevate your game in the game of life. And, uh, hey, over to you for what you think about it. Well, hey, man, good afternoon to you, too. The Seahawks game is not over. There's still hope. And uh, we're, we're rejoicing in Kansas City winning. So even if the Hawks lose today, you know, I feel like I got one win with uh, my other city over there in Kansas with you. Man, this 10X book is really, really challenging me. And you know, it's really kind of, um, here it is again for everybody that's watching. Um, I'm surprised by how much this has really gripped me and spoke to my life and my heart about, do I want to settle for a life of what he calls 2X or mediocrity, where I kind of just live with, you know, uh, a lead ceiling over me. Um, nothing hurts worse than having a dream um, or what you said, dying with your music still inside of you, but having a dream, but never having the courage to set aside the distractions that wrap themselves around us in life to really achieve those dreams. And there's a difference between fantasizing and having a vision, having a legitimate goal and dream. We're going to talk about that today. Ultimately, there's a unique ability inside of each and every one of us. There's something special inside of me. I believe it. There's something unique and special inside of you and your experience. And, and all of us have, there's something in your life and your walk that's unique and special about you. There's something to go after. But the thing is, can we take off the garbage, the things that so easily ensnare us, um, to ever achieve that? Or we, you know, and that's what this book really highlighted for me, about that 80% that really that keeps you back from pursuing that 20% of unique, amazing growth in life. I know with me spending most of my life in prison, I have a lot of goals. Uh, in getting out of here in the next few years, and a lot of it is contingent upon what I'm willing to take off, not what I'm willing to put on. A lot of times we just put on. It's like it's like putting more furniture in your house to be more comfortable. But what will end up happening is that it's just more cluttered. And sometimes we do yeah. that with our life. We're trying to make it more comfortable, but we just end up more cluttered and end up less comfortable. So um, excited to talk about this, man. Um, I'm going to talk about. Uh, or what Dan Sullivan and Benjamin Hardy, Dr. Benjamin Hardy, talk about pursuing your unique ability and what is your fitness function. You know, um, having a vision is important, right? It really, really is. Yep. Developing the standards that will carry you to your to vision, your to your vision, is even more important. Um, it's not just the dream. It's what are the mechanics that are going to get you to your dream, no matter. So with that, I'll give it back to you and let you start off with one of your first points. There's something you want to talk about. Yeah, um, no, looking forward to this. The, the One of the key things that I got out of the book is really the, the you know, um, Ben's description of what it means to have a 10x mindset. You know, and he broke it down into four things that are really vital for that. It's, you know, number one, it's not about, you know, doing more things it's really about doing less things and getting better results with the resources that you have he also emphasized that it's uh, not about quantity it's actually about you know doing less because you're doing the right things and you're you're taking your attention and your energy which are limited resources and you know and you're really focusing on the quality 
right? So it's not the quantity, but it's the quality. And then he also said it's not about the outcomes. It's about the process that's going to enable you, you know, to build that quality, to actually leverage the assistance of others, et cetera. And that's really what's going to take you to that 10x, you know, leap and growth. And then he also said that it's not about a need, but it's a want. You know, you're not just in survival mode. You're actually taking it to the next level. And to me, that mindset is, re is really vital. You know, the willingness to go for it, to have the courage, to have the commitment, to take it to the next level is really vital for that growth. And, you know, one of the things in, in uh, my experience in the military and then also that I've, that I've had, you know, here in Honeywell and I see it in corporate world is that a lot of times in that professional world, there's a big emphasis, you know, on your learning curve and your new job. And, and as you enter into that learning curve and you're climbing up it and you get a new job, you have to really reframe what you're doing and, and really focus where you're going to put your energy. That's when you, you learn and you grow and you become a new person. And, you know, because of the responsibilities that you're assigned, the military is really famous for doing that. But what that becomes is sort of like this learning curve on the front end of this inverted U. But if you stay in that job, but then don't do anything or change yourself, you're going to flatline out and you're going to start to atrophy and you're not challenging yourself to the next level. And it's this curve on really where you start going 10x because you start thinking about your life differently. You get rid of the noise, you concentrate on those tasks that you really need to become competent in. And then as soon as you start getting competent in them, then you're going to start flatlining. And if you're not careful, you're actually going to then start degrading. And it's really important that you then challenge yourself and you try to make your life a series of front-end curves that take you to higher and higher levels. And, and I think that what this book has done to me is make me realize that I've done this, these 10x jumps all through my life, whether it was wrestling, West Point, going into special forces, becoming a combat diver, transitioning from the military into Honeywell. Okay, well, what's next? If you want to go to the next level as an entrepreneur or be something like really valuable to the world, you need to use some of these tools in this book to help you get up this next curve. And it needs to be a curve that you want. And I think it's a really powerful way to, to look at life and how you can grow into the future. Well, that was fantastic. And I'm a little envious that I don't have a whiteboard in my background <laughs> that I could draw something on that's that's a great visual you know that kind of made me think about fix, the fitness function here that uh dr ben hardy talked about in his book and i'll read a quote really quick he says your fitness function points in the direction you're ultimately going and simultaneously who you're ultimately becoming i think one of the big trip-ups we have in life is that i think that the thing that i'm doing isn't the thing that i'm becoming i know that was true in my own life there were things that I was doing and I thought my life was going to end up just fine. When in actuality, I ended up in a death of prison. Um, now maybe everybody's situation isn't as dramatic as what brought me here to prison, but a lot of us are doing things, we're, we're wanting a better marriage, we're wanting better health, we're wanting a better career, but not knowing that the things that we're doing, if it's not pulling us in that direction, it's, it's be, we're becoming something in an opposite direction. And that is, that is a, 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 a tough reality to sit with. I remember when I was in county jail, um, waking up looking in the mirror um, and really not liking, no, not liking, that's way too soft, hating what was looking back at me, hating what I became. And I, I, and I really hit me how from the music I listened to to the, the way I didn't take care of myself, the poor friendships and, and the relationships that I had in my yeah. life, that was something I was doing, but it made me become something. And I understand that my life is an extreme example. Not everybody's going to relate to um, me being in prison and what brought me to prison 24 years ago. But the question is, and everybody needs to ask themselves, is the fitness function, and that's what he says, whatever your role, whatever your habits are, is developing you. And you need to ask yourself, hey, does this align with my highest self? Just like you are saying, as someone's going up that bell curve, Right? There's a moment of reflection. There's a moment of introspection that needs to take place. And sometimes you can't always do that by yourself. One of the big things he talks about in this book is about building your team. The people you keep around you determine your destiny. 
you know, they say that there's an old adage that says you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Your fitness function is the people that you're keeping around yourself, the vision you're developing, the habits of the standards that support that vision. Now, you know, in there, the guy talks about, excuse me, the guy, Benjamin Hardy talks about want. And I want to balance that a little bit for the listeners because life isn't all about wants. It is, to some degree, in the right context. But once I identify the things that I want, the things that I'm dreaming about, the person I want to become, the type of, the type of life that I want to have, the, the impact of the legacy that I want to leave after I'm gone, after I develop that want, I come up with what do I really need in order to get that want. Because if you're stuck chasing wants, you'll end up chasing the little wants and never get to what you really want. There was a, a book I was reading. It was a little thing. It says, a man who chases two rabbits ends up with none. So we do need to clarify what we want. Who do you really want to be? What do you really want to do with your life? And then you need to look at, now, what do I need in order to achieve that desired want? And I would, I would, I'll just add in one final thought. For whatever it is that you want, find people that you respect, that you value their opinion, and see if that want lines up with something that's a part of your true self or your highest self. You know, because I might say, man, I really want um, some materialistic thing. Not that certain materialistic things are, are, are all frivolous, um, but you should, it should be able to pass a few tests. Everything, all water that you're drinking should go through a few filters. And the same thing with the things that we want and pursue in life. It needs to go through some filters of some accountability partners uh, and your team. Okay, back to you. Yeah, I, um, yeah, this, this growth, this challenge of growth, this acceptance of the 2X versus the 10X. Um, I, I think it's a, it's a pretty important, you know, mindset that, um, that I'm going to adopt for the rest of my life now. And I think that because I've, re I've realized that, you know, I have lived a lot of my life in, in a 2X lane where I keep on trying to do more work hours in the day and jamming things in and really making things hectic. And, and I think sometimes that squeezes the joy and the love out of life, you know, as I'm, tr you know, maybe climbing that first mountain that, you know, uh, David Brooks talks about when really we, we should be focusing on that second mountain, that second mountain of meaning where you're really making a difference and you're being transformational. And, but if you do that correctly, like you were talking about, you know, that, that fitness function, then you're going to be focused on your refined standards and results. And, and, and you want to keep on pursuing those and reflecting on them as you, as you accomplish them, you know, through time as you're advancing towards your vision. And, and it's really important to measure backwards and not to measure forward. But what that does is that generates momentum and will take you to those new places. And, and one of the big things they talked about here is, you know, building the team. And, and one thing I think that, uh, you know, I've done with you, Drew, over the years, we've said, hey, we've both been interested in human development, human optimization type books. And I've been sharing those with you. You know, I've been your, your, your book provider, you know, through the mail. And uh, we've been reading those over the last couple years. But now we're like, okay, hey, instead of us keeping to doing this and, you know, making some, you know, piss poor pottery, we're ready to start upping our game and, and taking this to the next level. Because I think with our unique perspectives, we can actually provide value to the world by, by distilling these top, these concepts and these ideas and framing it from our unique perspectives. And then, and then adding value to the world and, and, you know, maybe gaining some interest and maybe making a difference. Um, and so I think, it, I think it's pretty cool to, to have this book at our, this time of our life and, uh, and see where we can take it. Yeah, man. Uh, dude, I hope I didn't take us off track with my last spiel. You know, man, I'm, I'm really interested in this 10x living, you know, and trying to find what is, what is 10x living with my faith, with my relationships, um, with my career pathway, with what you and I want to build together. And this guy's book spoke to me so much, still is speaking to me. And I know that we, we're kind of running out of time here. 
Um, and so I'm sure we'll continue to revisit a lot of the aspects. But um, what a blessing, man, uh, to be able to do this. And I'm just working on the grateful flow. What a blessing it is to be able to pursue my highest self and pursue big dreams. And that's the thing, dream big. I think that's the, one of the biggest takeaways. If you want a 10x life, it's going to be determined by the bravery that you have in order to dream. Um, man, I think now we're under a minute left. Uh, I want to thank everybody for listening. And obviously, we want to know what is what is 10x living for you? How do you yep. get to that next level of life? Yep. What's holding you back? Yeah, you know, here's the, here's the book again. Uh, you know, a lot of us in this world work really hard to make ends meet. You know, providing for our families, trying to take care of, you know, where we live and, and whatnot. And this book challenge you, challenges you to look at your daily, weekly, monthly, annual routines to see if you're really getting the, the you know, the juice out of your squeeze in life. And um, yeah. there's a better way to do things for higher quality. Well, I love hey, you, Drew. Hey, uh, curlingconvict.com. Hope to see you there. All right, man. Love you, bro. Love you, too.